Hello devs, Stefan here from beapython.dev. In this video, I'm going to go over the most in-demand Python skills. So your most in-demand Python skills are always going to start with your general problem-solving abilities. So that's your usage of data structures, uh, stacks, arrays, hash tables, uh, search trees, graphs, all that fun stuff. Um, algorithm awareness, such as bubble sort, quick sort, kind of your basic things there. Uh, breadth and depth first tree and graph traversals fit into the algorithm domain. Your space and time complexities. So if you have a function and it's doing some logic on a thousand elements, if it runs a thousand times, that's gonna be ON. If it's a thousand squared, that's ON squared. Generally you wanna avoid N squared algorithms and keep up with log N algorithms wherever possible. Or n log n, best case, where you're doing like a sort on an array and then you're traversing over the array trying to find some elements or combining them together. Uh, this doesn't actually fit into general problem solving abilities, but when you are creating code that does something, making sure that that code is very readable and extensible, being able to do your recursions and your memorization algorithms and then optimizing that using dynamic programming techniques. Lastly, you can train on all these at Hacker Rank and Lead Code. If you're a member of the Blind Forum and you're kind of looking through, how do I get a job at one of the top companies? They're always recommending just go do a whole bunch of Lead Code and do it in kind of a systemized way. There's posts out there that'll tell you how to do this. Uh, kind of search them up on uh, some uh, some brute force problems. Some depth first problems, some dynamic programming problems, kind of mix it up in all the areas so that you have a good versatile skill set and you can kind of read a problem and come up with an algorithm that'll solve that problem kind of almost without even thinking about it. In addition to your general problem solving skills, it's also good if you are going to a Python interview to have mastery of the Python language. Uh, even if you're just a software developer and you're kind of expected to know all the, the different languages and be able to apply different languages depending on what the company is using, uh, it's good to have a mastery of the programming language. But since we are be a python.dev, uh, we specialize in Python, obviously. So part of having that domain knowledge is expertise of the standard library, being able to use OS uh, module for doing pathing stuff without having to look up the API docs all the time. Uh, the sys library, it's commonly used for exiting with specific statuses, parsing in your args. And then the another one I use a lot is the multi-processing library. So if you're doing some kind of heavy based uh, automation script where you're calling a binary for 100 different subsets of data file input, uh, being able to split that up into like a threaded way so that you can do it uh, maybe two to 16 times as fast depending on the CPU that you're using. And obviously you should know how to do your looping, uh, writing good functions with good names, uh, being able to do object-oriented programming, I mean, well, Python is very versatile, so you can either do like an object paradigm or a functional paradigm, depending on what you prefer. Uh, but if you are having a large code base that will be extended throughout the years with more use cases, it's good to fit in objects where you can, um, since it is a familiar concept in programming. Uh, make sure your, your objects make sense. They have a single responsibility. You know, you inject your dependencies where you can and you don't have hard-coded dependencies, so that'll make testing easier. Uh, it's also good to look into some design patterns. You can look into the book, The Gang of Four. Uh, you can Google that and that will break down all of the design patterns. Some of the more common ones, the factory pattern where you can dynamically create objects, a facade pattern, which will create simple to consume APIs and kind of give a client breadth into your whole library with just a single consumable API. Uh, the adapter pattern, which is a shim for two interfaces to be able to communicate. So if you have one person that's speaking English and then you have another person that's speaking Chinese, if they don't know how to speak to each other, kind of the adapter pattern would be a class in the middle 
like an interpreter that can speak both languages and translate to each other. And another thing that shows you have mastery of the Python language is being able to write good list comprehensions and knowing when to write them. Uh, it's it's kind of easy to write like a list comprehension that does a list comprehension on some really complex filtering type things. But the problem with doing that is if other developers read that one line of code that a C++ function might take, you know, 15 lines to do, uh, they might have to read over it several different times to find out how the data is actually being manipulated. All right, so now that we've covered the, the basis of the general problem solving skills and then mastery of a specific language, in our case, it's gonna be Python. Uh, there are kind of other branches of skills that this can go into that you may end up seeing within the your Python career. Uh, the first one we're gonna talk about is task automation. Uh, having solid skills in this area means that you can recognize repetitive tasks that can be solved with code. For instance, if uh, your team is doing some kind of constant data collection and then processing on this data, uh, that's something that a Python script would be really good at doing. Uh, if you need to take data, run it into a binary, take that output, run it into another like binary executable file, and then take that and then run that through another binary. And then you need to save some metadata around this and maybe like create a wiki or some kind of PDF. That's also something that Python would be really good at automating. And then lastly, if you have to send out a bunch of emails for reports, you know, it's another case, very good for Python to automate this. Uh, and then to kind of automate these tasks, there's several lines you can go. The, the most basic one is just a script, just a single Python file, maybe 50 lines of code that does some kind of automation task. If this needs to start growing and have flexibility in how it's run, you can kind of turn it into a command line interface using the arg parse library. So you can pass in different arguments similar to how you would like with git, where you can do like git push, git checkout, git pull. Uh, those would be your arguments. And then that gives you flexibility over how the script is run. And then lastly, you can convert your automation scripts into like a complete GUI based application. So this would be a good use case to consider if non-technical people will be using your scripts to do things. Uh, and that's, you can make these GUIs with the TK inter library. I, I, I think it's I'm pretty sure it's TK inter. I apologize that that's the wrong name. Uh, I haven't used it very much myself. I pretty much just write command line interfaces and then the next one that we're going to talk about. Uh, the next big high in demand Python skill is, this isn't the one I thought it was. <laughs> All right, the next big in demand Python skill that we're going to talk about is web application development. So there's two main ways this is being done within Python. That's the Django framework and then the Flask framework. Uh, I don't have much work with Django, but this is kind of like a full-fledged defined language similar to what you'd expect Node.js and Ruby on Rails to be. So it's it's fully managed. It's very defined in how you do things as far as like declaring your views, your APIs, and how you work with the database. And then you can also use Flask, which is a microservice framework. Basically with Flask, it just gives you the basic uh, web server. And then from there, you can use different other plugins or you can write all your code for putting data into your databases, whether that's SQL or NoSQL, uh, doing your authorizations. Uh, and then another thing Flask does give you is it gives you the Jinja library for making HTML templates. Uh, you can either choose to use that or you can also bring in uh, JavaScript client-side frameworks such as AngularJS or uh, what are the other popular ones? I know React, and then there's a third one, which is also extremely popular, but I'm blanking on the name of that right now. All right, so next high in demand skill for Python developers out there is machine learning and data science, data analysis. They're all three kind of relatively grouped together. And the reason this is becoming so popular now is because of the Skikit Learn libraries uh, you also have pandas and numpy out there. These three libraries makes it very easy for kind of newcomers to come in and start doing their own experiments. 
uh, training models and then kind of doing some of these classification problems that machine learning is good at. And some of those problems is being able to classify plant types. The kind of beginner introduction problem to this is the iris data set where you have like the plant length, the petal length, the petal width. And then based on those three things, you can kind of train a model that will tell you what species of iris it is. Uh, predicting when something will fail based on sensor models. This is something I tried to do during my internship. Uh, we determined the sensors weren't getting the right data. So I was influential in having the company that I was working for create new hardware with more specialized sensors. So maybe they're doing this now. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, another machine learning problem is speech recognition. Uh, and this is because computers don't have ears, so they don't know how to interpret sound per se. Uh, and basically what the machine learning algorithm does is it takes the time series energy levels and it does lots of different transformations on that to eventually convert it into words that can be recognized. Uh, spam filters, another popular one. Image classification, such as face detection. Uh, this is, I want to say face detection is being done in kind of like authorizations. You can lock and unlock your iPad with face detection now. And then animal detection. I saw this in a commercial where Microsoft is doing stuff to detect snow leopards in the wild. They just have like video cameras in certain places running all the time. And then they use this machine learning to like stop the frame when it's a leopard and kind of saving thousands of man hours of manual analysis of all this video. So that's kind of a cool area. And Python makes that really easy to do. Granted, Python is slower than machine learning in other languages. It's at least easier with the Python syntax. Um, handwriting conversions. This is if you have like a tablet and you write your name on the tablet and then the tablet can turn those letters into actual text and then save those as like a, a digital document. And then recommendation engines. This is like where Netflix, where if you watch this video and then you watch another video and then you watch another video, based on you watching those three videos, it's seen that a thousand other people have also watched those three videos. And because of the way you watch those videos, maybe you cut one of them off halfway through that now you'll like this fourth and fifth video. So uh, the problem space of machine learning is definitely much bigger than this. Uh, Self-driving cars is another one, but I don't think you're going to have a Tesla running Python anytime soon. But learning machine learning in Python will definitely give you a foot in the door in those areas. Um, the next skill we're going to talk about is database object relational mapper frameworks. So if you're machine learning application or your Flask application is going to be reading and writing data from a RDS database, kind of like a relational one. Um, there's a library out there called SQL Alchemy. It's a very complex library and it's almost like a framework in itself, but you can define classes, define connections to your DB, uh, create different interfaces and plugins and mixins for your classes to really have a lot of control over how you read and write data into a database. Uh, having expertise in that library and during an interview will definitely make you stand out. And then the last skill that will really kind of define you as a Python master or even just a software developer master or a personal master of yourself is having good soft skills. You know, this includes having you know, self-discipline to have good eating and sleeping habits, uh, exercising to promote your own energy. Third one here, meditation for mental tranquility. Um, meditation is definitely kind of a more popular area in self-help books and different productivity communities out there. I probably do it maybe once a week and it's, it's difficult. I haven't fully noticed the benefits, but it's something I'm practicing. For all you meditation experts out there, uh, leave a comment below if you want to provide more insight than I can into this area. Um, good communication skills. As you can see during this video, I may not be the best verbal or <laughs> even written communicator, but part of making this video is practicing and increasing those skills. You can also talk to the mirror like they do in The Sims if you ever played that old game. Or just practice uh, within your teams. 
doing learning sessions where you get out there and you talk about something that you learned in a recent coding project or you talk about some framework or library that you learned in your own spare time and kind of share wealth of knowledge among the different people in your team. So that will help you increase those communication skills. Good goal setting habits is an important one. Uh, keeping your goals smart as well. So specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. So if you're able to set good, smart goals and you can consistently deliver on those goals, um, that will set you apart from a lot of other people out there. And then kind of the last one that I wanted to call out as a good soft skill to have is being principle-centered. Uh, this is a theory from the Stephen Coley Seven Habits of Effective People, where instead of being like work-centered or friend-centered or money-centered, uh, these there, there's all different kinds of centers that basically declares like how you perceive the things you you do and what drives your actions, and there's positives to these and negatives to these but in general uh Stephen Coley Stephen Covey <laughs> sorry Stephen Covey believes that being principle centered tends to drive you to being the most effective and that's because to be principle centered that means that you've spent a lot of self reflection determining what those principles are and after identifying those you can prioritize your time to be more proactive and focus on things that give you more long-term value over short-term gain and be a much kind of overall versatile person. So those are the Python skills and skills in general that you should be working on to increase your software development career, especially in the Python area. Uh, thank you. If you found this useful, please leave a like, subscribe for more Python content, and check out the blog link in the description for more information.